Hi everyone, this is Val from Val K Inc. and today we are going to be working on the Violet Evergarden 1-6 scale from the Ori line of E2046. She comes with her eye decals and some basic instructions right on the top, as well as a parts list and the base is included with all of the bubble wrapped pieces. With all the pieces accounted for, I'm just going to do a little bit of dry fitting and take a look at each individual piece to see what needs a little bit more putty, just to fill in some spots. But so far, all of these pieces are lining up really well, and I really love the way they're sculpted. I did notice with a couple of these, some of the pieces were really loose, especially between the legs and the boots. You can tell with this leg right here, it really jiggles back and forth, but a little bit of pinning and putty will fix that. I also can fix that uh, loose connection on the hips with a little bit of pinning and putty as well. But otherwise, everything is basically just getting ready to go into a wash. I had some flashing that was left over in the bags that terrified me because I thought they were broken tabs, but they were fine. So everything gets a bath in purple power and water, and yes, I am using my lunch lady gloves because I don't like touching purple power with my bare hands. Next, I'm just cleaning up some of the pre-drilled holes that seem to have a little bit of material left over. That way this hand that was the back hand could fit in perfectly all the way. Nothing too big here, I'm just using a simple pin vise. And for the other pieces, I'm just going to clip off the extra tabs. I like to use Tamiya Basic Tools for this, just some clippers and some filing pieces. The way I like to handle this is clipping off a majority of the tab and then leaving just enough that I can sand down to the exact level that I need for the piece. And I have a variety of sanders that I like to use. Basically, I have these sponge sanders that are different grits as well as some metal ones and even some papers. My biggest concern is this skirt piece because I really want to hide the seam lines on the sides and I need everything to line up as perfectly as possible. Also, so I can test out the top and leg portions. Here, I'm noticing that the bottom portion is definitely gonna need a bit more putty and I need the top to be as level as possible with the top of the kit. Yay, it's lining up and it looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna work on the pinning. I like to pin my pieces so everything lines up and sits perfectly within each other. And it also helps the kit with some stability. I'm really worried about this kit because she does stand on one foot, but with the pin, it's already so much better. And I can work on the rest of the pinning. Basically what I do is figure out where I want my first hole, put a little sticky tack on the other portion that goes into the slot for the tab, and then with a little bit of pressure, I should be able to pull out the piece and have the exact spot and angle where I can pin in the rest of the pin. And here we go. <laughs> this one turned out really well because I could see the direction and location. So with my pin vise, I'll just line it up to what's here and then do a little starting point, take off the little tab and then continue pinning uh, the rest of the piece with the exact alignment. It takes a little bit of practice to do this and it just takes a little bit of time. So pinning makes me very nervous and I like to get it done first because I can focus on it a little bit more and then every other piece that I work on is a little bit easier after pinning. It uh, also helps if you remember where you put your rod down so you can find it easy and get it in the slot. 
and it also helps when you don't misplace your pliers and end up grabbing the closest plastic box near you so that you can press your pin in. Uh, <laughs> I don't recommend using a plastic box, but uh, yeah, this is just kind of how I work. <laughs> The nice thing about having a pin vise or small drill on hand is you can sort out some of the smaller details. For example, I really wanted these ruffles to have the holes that this little ascot has in the show, so a little bit of pin vise helps with that. The pinning is done and all of these pieces have their pins. Everything lines up, so now it is time to move on to putty work. The putty that I like to use is the Tamiya Polyester Putty, which I discovered last year from Leona's workshop. And it's my favorite putty. It works great, it dries quickly, and it's perfect for sanding. It keeps these pieces nice and tight, and it's been my favorite. I'm actually running low on it here, and it's a little dry, so I need to pick up uh, some more. <laughs> The Vaseline is the material that you use on the other piece that you want to separate from the putty filled portion, so that is why I have that in the shot. I'm just using a generic Vaseline from the grocery store. Remember whatever pieces have the Vaseline to clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol before you go into priming and paints. Some pieces I like to leave in the seam because it looks like a seam in the clothing, while other pieces I really need to work to get the seam out like I'm going to do with the skirt. Right now this uh, putty needs to dry a little bit and then the sanding can happen. For sanding I like to use a heavier grit on my sanding sponges and I like to go very light with it and work my way across the piece and back and forth. And then as I keep sanding I will downgrade to finer and finer grits until I'm down to this 2000 grit sandpaper to smooth it as best as possible. Okay, priming. So for small pieces I like to prime them all in one go just to save on primer and I'm trying to do everything in one go. But alas, every time I try to hide a seam, it seems like it, I can never get it in the first go. This is pretty common and I just did a little bit more putty and a little bit more sanding until I could get it to really hide under the primer. Speaking of the primer, for this kit I'm using a primer slash white paint. That way there is a white base for me to work on for the rest of my paints. I also like to spray in the garage with gloves and with protection for breathing. Uh, when I don't have a mask, I do open up the garage door, so it's not the most beautiful place to film my spray work, so any other sprayed pieces I'm going to leave out of the rest of the video. Next is the painting part, and some pieces I actually do prefer to hand paint. So for a lot of the pieces of this kit, I'm doing a little bit of hand painting. I'm also making all of these pieces slightly lighter because I plan to shade and seal everything which darkens the paint tones. The paint I'm using is actually depotted paint pen paint. So acrylic paint pens have a special binder in the paint that helps it stick to plastic and has levelers that help the paint dry in an even level tone. It also helps with coverage and generally these types of paints still need two coats of paint but I find it a lot easier to work with than cheaper acrylic paints. Sometimes with my sprayed paints I still want a nice even clean line on the edges especially for these skirts so I'm just going back in with a light small brush to even up those lines on the edges. Again, I'm hand painting a lot of portions just because that's my preference. You can absolutely do this kit with masking and just spray painting or airbrushing, but for pieces with uh, 
really intricate edges. I like to push and pull the paint like on this hair piece where I really want the hair to meet the skin as best as possible. So for the first time ever, I ran into something strange with these paints where, as I was painting, bubbles were developing. It's not a big issue, but sometimes this happens with mixed paints. Just press the bubbles down and keep moving. <laughs> uh, you basically don't want bubbles to dry into your work, so just keep an eye out for that. And basically that happens with the rest of these hair pieces, but I just work slowly and complete the painting on all of the pieces. Whenever I have to paint oddly shaped areas, I actually like to use some sticky tack or some rubber eraser to make a slight stretched out barrier around the pieces. And then once the paint dries, I can pull off the excess and then I have a nice clean edge on an odd shaped area like this brooch. Uh, now we're going to move on to these dreaded lines on the skirt. I actually love the way these brown straps look, but I'm so afraid of getting some brown on the rest of the white skirt. So I went a little overboard and masked everything off before doing a little bit of careful hand painting of each seam so that hopefully when I do my final reveal, this is pretty clean, but like with all things, I imagine that I'm going to have to clean up around some of these lines anyway. And sure enough, I do have some spots I need to clean up, but not too bad. I just have a little bit of bleeding that happened in a couple of spots and a couple of missed areas. So a little bit of cleaning up with white and brown paint will fix those in the end. Now it's time for some pastel shading. I'm going to be making these legs look more like brown stockings to match the kit. So I'm starting with a medium pastel brown and working my way around from the most stretched areas of the stockings into the more dense areas of the stockings. So we're going to be moving from this medium brown into a dark brown. And I'm just building up the pastels. I'm going kind of heavy with this so I get kind of that stocking texture. And then as soon as I am done with the pastels themselves, I will be matte sealing this work. Same thing goes for the hair and the ribbons. Basically, this is why I painted everything slightly lighter, because the shading will make everything slightly darker after it's sealed.
I want to keep the lighter portions of these sleeves as clean as possible, so I just mask those off while I'm shading the blue and sealing off the blue areas of her sleeves. Sometimes you have to be picky about what gets shaded and what gets a fresh coat of paint. I wanted the leather of her boots to have a very dark shading, but I wanted the lighter portions of the soles to have a lighter shade, so I'm just very carefully painting the soles of her shoes after uh, shading and sealing the leather portions because I really want these shoes to stand out with all of their details. Time to get some of these pieces together now. I like to make sure that my small pieces are firmly set so that I don't forget them for the final build. I almost forgot one of the most important parts. I need to finish her face and basically I need to decide what I want to do with these eyes. Um, well this kit did come with very beautiful decals so I do want to try using them and depending on how those turn out I might go back to hand painting. Which I did hand paint the lashes but turns out it helps if you put that in front of the camera and not to the side of it. Okay. We can fix that. Here is the last of the lashes going on. Uh, again, I'm just using my finest tipped brush to do this and going very slow as I hold my breath. Now I put in a couple more details, but as you can see, they're a little bit uneven. So I'm actually gonna go back and even these out a little bit more. There we go. Now that I have all of these pieces in place, it's time to look into using these decals. Basically what I did was I decided to cut out the iris because decals always have a shine and I don't mind shine on an iris. So a little bit of a soak in some water. And after placing the first one, I've decided it looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep using the decals. So now it's just a matter of fishing out this last decal and just just, just placing this eye in. Wow, okay. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little bit of finessing and a little bit of adjustment. I found it much easier to do this with a toothpick just to get it lined up correctly. And here is the kit with a little bit of hand painting and a little bit of decal. So I'm going to finish off the eyes with a little bit of UV resin and just need to cure that really quickly before I move on to the rest of the kit. Now it's time for the base, and I have some vinyl paper that I absolutely love that has this beautiful black marble pattern. And the easiest way to use that is to measure out a circle, place it on the base, and then here with a chopstick, I am just scoring out the tile lines. These are grout lines for the tile, and I'm just going really slow and making sure I don't have any rips in this paper. And thanks to this being a vinyl covered paper, I can actually fill in the grout lines like you would when applying real tile. This is basically like a thicker panel lining technique. Basically, I'm taking my paint pen, filling in the line, and then with a wet paper towel, washing away the excess. And the paint that pools inside the line makes a beautiful little grout line for your tile. This way you can do it with any color and you can make it as thick or thin as possible just by adding in more paint after the first layer dries. 
I'm going to be keeping them nice and thin for this kit though, as I move on to a special base that I'm planning. What's this? A special little dirt mix? Yes it is, and as you can see I'm adding in the color to darken it up because I really want some green in this base. So I'm making a little bit of greenery from this moss collection. The moss collection is a floral line that is generally used for flower arrangements, but I find it works really well when you want a mossy base on your kit. I wanted something that was very overgrown and mossy and green and kind of had this new life to it. So I'm adding in vines, roots, and fungus as well as the moss and some especially cute tiny plants and flowers. So I decided to film that. This is all going on a piece of scrap wood that I sanded in my garage and I've basically set everything up so that the kit itself can go onto this special base or be displayed off of it easily. I'm adding everything in while this mixture is still wet so that as it dries it sets everything in place permanently. And this will include the darker flocking that I'm going to be adding in right next to the middle of the base and everything is set. After that I'm going to be shading it with a little bit of blue pastel just so it's a little darker on the rim and then everything gets a nice seal from this Mod Podge spray on glue. They now sell an all-in-one wet spray glue for Mod Podge. Time for some tiny plants and flowers. Here I'm setting in the boot with its pins and its glue, just so it's the most stable part on the base. I'm doing a final fit onto my extra base that I built, and the rest of the kit is going to get its final touches and completed after this. <laughs> 